Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you so much for joining me today. If it is your first time joining us on Charmed Life, well, I'll give you a little bit about what the show is. Um, All about each week, uh, we do broadcast live from Universal Broadcasting Studios in Hollywood, California. Live every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific, and you can catch the archives of Charmed Life on YouTube. Um, Just search for Charmed Life with Trisha Carr on YouTube, and you'll find my YouTube channel. And actually, I'm also putting up some of the episodes on my other YouTube channel, which uh, my cats started. And I'm not kidding. They actually started this. Uh, and that one is uh, youtube.com slash kiddios. You can find someone there. But really, right now I'm putting up all of my videos on my main channel. And that was, some of those videos include some teachings, some lives, some all kinds of stuff. And then you can also find the archives on any podcast outlet, the audio version of them. Um, Stitchers, iTunes, Spreaker. And again, just search for Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. And so what the show is about, topically speaking, magic and metaphysics, the unconditional love of the universe, basically how we can help one another to live a charmed life, a magical life, which is what I believe we all came here to do. So I also have to <clears throat> acknowledge and apologize, kind of, I mean, it's not really like I did it on purpose, but I just want to acknowledge that my voice may sound a little funny today. I'm getting um, past a cold or, well, I'll be honest, it, I think I had the flu. Woo! And um, fortunately, y'all can't catch it because um, this is you're not you're not in my face piece. Actually, I think that that we actually more we're exposed all the time. It's more about our immune system. And well, I'm going to be able to ask my guest expert about that probably because she is an expert on wellness. And um, I think that's about the business that I have today. We do welcome guest experts on Charmed Life every week, and I have one coming up. We're going to be talking about selfishness selfishness versus versus self love. Pardon my. Let me say that again. Selfishness versus self love. I still, I still flubbed it. That's what it's like when you have a cold. And um, besides that, we are also taking live calls today. Three two three five two four two five nine nine. If you're catching this live on Facebook, and um, I am a medium. The way that my charmed life expresses itself is through being a medium, an animal communicator, and an energy healer. And so when we take readings, or excuse me, when we take calls, we may, we may do some readings if you like, but we really love spiritual questions. And um, I guess that's about all the business I have today. Well, they have my website, right? So um, you can find more about my work. I do a one-on-one work with people, counseling and readings. I have classes, all kinds of other resources and um, help and blogs and writing, all that kind of stuff. And that's trishacarcharm.com. And that's how you can find my social media handles as well, at Trisha Carr Charm. And so now I'm very excited to welcome my host, my guest host today. She is um, a beautiful soul. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how dazzling she is. She's an intuitive wellness coach and a spirit channel. How exciting. And her name is Lauren Antuofermo. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, Trisha. Thank you. (laughs) So lovely to see you. How you doing? I'm doing great, actually. We're in the same position because I'm getting over a cold. So your listeners will have to excuse me if I have to stop and call for a moment or two. I know. It's just been, I know, as they say, it's been going around. But, you know, is it is what I said true? Do you think that it's more about our immunity than exposure? Or, you know, what do you think? It certainly is because we just know just from the science um, that when you're stressed and Um, your immune system can be compromised. Uh, It's not working at its peak performance if you're constantly in the flight or or fight uh, response. Your immune system's working overtime and you could be more susceptible to what's around you, uh, certainly. I mean, I I imagine that we're kind of exposed all the time, right? We get out there in the world and there's all kinds of viruses. um, Definitely. That's why like when you go to work and somebody's got a hacking cough, only some people will get it and others won't. And I noticed that at my current job right now, there's some people like, it's so uh, prevalent. Everybody's talking about everybody's getting sick. Everybody's getting sick. Oh, no. And it started with one person going, oh, you better not get me sick. Everybody's going to get sick. Get away from here. And everybody started this panic. And now so many people are sick. And I think what that goes to is actually your beliefs. So one person, that's what's actually contagious because we are, because someone else's beliefs and being 
talking to people and empaths and all that kind of stuff, we actually take on other people's beliefs and and that's and actually epigenetics if I don't you've heard heard of what epigenetics has has discovered that it does have more to do well not with genetics at least because people who are adopted inherit the same diseases as their adoptive family and so that's that's interesting right sure. it's clearly not their physical genetics but one thing that you definitely do inherit from your family is their belief system because that's exactly. what children need they need to be able to survive in their social group meaning their family and so they have to they we feel that we have to adopt our that, the beliefs yeah. you know the structures so that we aren't rejected well you know what we, we already started on something amazing but <laughs> i know <laughs> i think it's fascinating and uh but and I'm so glad that, you know, isn't it, isn't it beautiful how spirit can work? Something good is coming of our colds because we're actually talking about, I think, a really I important aspect of this together. But yes. before we get any further down any particular topic, let's get into the topic of you, Lauren. Can you please tell us about your background and your journey? Okay. Well, let's see. I am an exercise physiologist. And really what that is, is kind of like a glorified personal trainer with a master's degree. I have a, a degree in, in exercise science. Wow. I also, um, you know, work with clients. I actually work at headquarters, Air Force Reserve Command, creating um, health and wellness programs. Mm. So my journey in fitness started with my own um, emotional eating habits as an empathic and sensitive child. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, with a lot of us in families that can be quite intense. You know, you learn to cope with feelings in in sometimes negative ways. And for me, that wound up being food, especially because my strict Italian father who came here with no education from Italy, he wanted um, us to be, he was worried about what everybody else thought of us all the time. Mm. So I adopted those beliefs too. So I was a closet eater on top of that oh. <laughs> and told that people don't like um, fat, fat girls, things like that. Well, lo and behold, I wound up gaining a lot of um, weight. And it was about the way I felt myself, mm -hmm. you know, and my unhealthy relationship with food. So when I finally decided that I had had enough and got into healthy relationships with food and exercise, that's when I decided I need to help other people with these issues. Mm -hmm. And as I did that, I realized that you couldn't really help someone to get lasting change unless you addressed like all four pillars of wellness mental, physical, spiritual, and social, you know, mm -hmm. social, emotional. And um, so I started down that path. My spiritual path opened up as I started working with people more. My intuitive abilities grew. And so now I combine them to help people with, you know, loving guidance from their spirit guide team what's go and practical advice from my knowledge of health and wellness. Wow, that's amazing. And I feel like we're pretty lucky. This is proof that we are definitely ascending as, uh, you know, a plant. And the planet is ascending as a collective consciousness because it certainly wasn't something, the four pillars weren't some, a way that we addressed health issues. Certainly not in our parents' generation or, you know, our grandparents, of course. I, I remember, I'm recalling a story I heard Dor Doreen Virtue on a radio show. And she was pregnant, when she was pregnant back in the 70s, I think it was, um, and Doreen Virtue is, um, well, w renowned author and teacher and, you know, intuitive and all that kind of stuff in case you aren't familiar with her. And she, before she had sort of really opened up to her, the fullness of her spirituality, she was still, she was a person who was, um, who came up in the um, Church of Christian Science. Am I saying right? Yeah. And so that church actually has a lot of metaphysical um, components. So she already had that influence. And she went to the doctor when she was pregnant in the 70s and said, you know, I'm, I've been very stressed out and I'm afraid it's affecting my pregnancy. And the doctor said to her, what, what are you talking about? If stress doesn't affect your pregnancy, get out of here. <laughs> can, wow. you, can you imagine that? And that was only in the 70s. And now here we are. Uh, I joke about you know, when, when people come to me for help or coaching, I feel like I telling them, you know what, go meditate for two weeks and then we can start our work yeah. <laughs> because meditation is kind of the, the baseline, getting yourself into yeah. that. And I feel like for doctors that you can walk into the door and now they would say, you know what, I don't even need to hear what's wrong for two weeks, go lower your stress and then we can start working. <laughs> Yes. Everything is stress is based on stress now. And that's that's speaking to those those four pillars. 
which I think it's we're so true. Yeah, you and, can't separate, you know, the mind and the body connection. And and sometimes, and we're still in that mindset that you have a physical symptom, and we're kind of connect, looking for only a physical answer. Mm-hmm. When you know, it's kind of like um, you can't. There's so many components that you have to address it from from different aspects. Like if you have an electronic, a piece of electronic, a computer, and you're trying to fix a computer, but the problem is actually the electro is the electricity is not is not on you know what I mean so (laughs) exactly (laughs) gotta plug it in yeah (laughs) yeah um well that and so you have been working as um, an intuitive and a coach and a spirit channel so um talk to us about would you like to talk about your work as a channel and who who you work with and how you work you know because there's all kinds of um, ways to channel some people channel you know, particular entities. Like I, a few weeks ago, I had Natalie Gianelli, who um, channels a naturopathic doctor from the um, early 1800s. And um, anyway, so yeah, uh, tell us about your channeling work. Well, um, that started about three years ago. And actually, I, I didn't even know what channeling was when that started for me. Oh, wow. And of course, we are always channeling when we're in the flow we're channeling Mm -hmm. some people do it when they when they write um some people do it when they're playing sports you know they just kind of channel this this high this energy that they just feel in the flow with everything Mm. and for me what channeling means is a speech channel and i get um usually it started with my higher self i believe um so channeling the higher self we each have a higher self and we each have connection with the universal source wisdom and and knowledge and so that is where I mostly um channel from when I do readings and stuff and we connect with you know other people's higher self but I've also been able to um channel different entities so I don't have one like Abraham Hicks if you've heard of Uh um Esther Hicks she channels Abraham and that's the only entity she channels but I have channeled Archangel Michael Archangel Ariel Mm. um and also Christ consciousness energy, yes. so collective energies. And that was really interesting for me to learn um, that I can channel consciousness um, energies and collective energies, um, love mm-hmm. energies, source energies. So yes. that was pretty cool. That's, uh, yes, yeah, so that's, that's something I learned about myself in the area of telepathy in particular, because, you know, I'm an animal communicator. And so I started with, Um, well, I think with animal communication, it probably started with actually my animals who were past, you know, so the ones I had a relationship with and then speaking with specific individuals who are here in the body and then realizing that, like you say, there are just different collective, you can kind of put in in truth, everything is one. There is no separation. So we can put a separation. We could put a lines around anything and say this collection. So this collection is Trisha, (laughs) you know, this collection is Dragonstone. This is this piece of, you know, this crystal. The way they um, um, mm -hmm. have explained it to me Mm -hmm. is, or the way I've understood it is that like, say archangels, Mm -hmm. um, they are a specific collective. Mm-hmm. And so whoever steps forth, whatever the dominant energy is, um, kind of steps forth and say that's Archangel Michael. And because that particular energy is most suited to what I need to hear or I'm ask, asking at that time. Right. And I feel like um, we even do that. When we go to work, our everyday jobs, we put forth our dominant um, work persona. Right. And when we're home and we're being mom, we're putting our mom persona. Um, but all of that is us. So I kind of look at it that way. Well, that makes so much sense, too, when you translating that to mediumship, too, because, you know, when we do mediumship readings and someone says, I want to speak with my father who passed and it's like, OK, well, let's see. And you just I just clear my mind. And then sometimes it's like, you know, aunt it comes forth first. <laughs> and she's like, no, no I got to talk to you first before you could talk to mm-hmm. dad. They line up. So it's like whatever is actually needed. And spirit always knows that. Exactly. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about um, selfishness versus versus self-love. Why can't I say that? Selfishness versus... That's so funny. I, think I was trying not to giggle when you were saying it before. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't. And now- <laughs> like, oh no, now I'm going to do the same thing. I should have practiced it this versus more- self-love. self-love. <laughs> So Lauren is an empath and I'm an empath. And by the way, I would love to just cover real quick um, 
what that word empath means, at least the way I mean it. Because sometimes I get people who ask me and they say, well, isn't everyone just an empath? And some people don't believe in it. And that's fine. It doesn't really matter. The reason that that label that I address it in that particular way is because as an, that it's, and it's not like something to be um, neither honored by or ashamed of. It's just a thing. You know what I mean? It's like the color of my hair. Um, but to me, my experience as an empath, so empaths, um, experience other people's feelings and even thoughts as though they are their own. And the difference is that, for example, a sensitive person or a highly sensitive person might read it and pick it up, but they don't necessarily feel like it's theirs. You know what I mean? Like they, they might feel they, it changes their mood and they respond to it and it makes them can they can respond to it in a way that um, where they take it on. But it's like with an empath, I literally, this is what I learned, it was such a salvation for me to understand this mechanism. I literally thought, I had thoughts that were not my own because I was picking up someone else's emotion. And it's, without that awareness, it it actually, I I find that um, empaths tend to be, kind of have anxiety um, and overwhelm. Whereas like highly sensitive or just other sensitive people who don't have that kind of empath mechanism as strong or at least as dominant they tend they maybe tend to be um, more depressed because they're picking up their you know if that's on them all the time and it's affecting their mood and of course anxiety and depression are uh, two sides of the same coin and uh, you know you can experience anxiety or depression whether you're any of these things but that's the reason why I, I identify empaths because I think sometimes being able to understand how that function is, then you can understand yourself a little better. And yet yet at the same time, when we cast a wider net, we can kind of address all sensitive people with very similar, um, you know, ways to help ourselves. So I just wanted to mention that before we started. (laughs) No, exactly. I think it's important. Um, I think I agree with you. When I first found the label of empath, I was like, oh, that means so much oh my you know I it actually made me feel normal yeah I'm not crazy I had (laughs) something to you know to kind of hang my hat on and say okay this is what I'm feeling I can identify this I can discern this Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. um and it's funny because I think sometimes um getting the label really really helps us Mm -hmm. but then we um I went through this process of over identifying with it and now saying Okay, it's a tool rather than what only that I am. Because if I say, for me anyway, I became, oh, I'm an empath. I can't deal with certain things. Mm-hmm. I'm an empath. And so I must stay away from certain things. So it wound up, at first it gave me freedom, mm-hmm. then it limited me. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so now I kind of um, turn it into a, a strength and, and using it as a tool rather than um, something that I it's something I have to be aware of because I'm still an empath and I still need Mm self-care, which will lead me into why it's so important for empaths and light workers and sensitive people to have self-care and why we so often feel that that is selfish and how to understand that difference. Why do we feel that it's selfish? What what have you figured out for yourself and for others since you work with others so much? What What is that mechanism like? What happens a lot of times with empaths is that because we feel it as our own, we want to fix it. And so we have to fix the person or the situation that is, that is wrong, that we see there's something wrong. There's a difficulty, there's a challenge, there's something going on. And we feel if we don't fix it, it's now our responsibility. Mm -hmm. We take it on. And now, of course, when we feel it, we feel like we have to fix it, do something about it. And when we don't, when we can't, It can become, you know, if we walk away from it, well, we've already felt it as if it was our own. If we walk away from it, we feel like we own it Mm -hmm. and that we're abandoning something or someone or a situation if we walk away from it. Um, And that's where the awareness of what's yours and what's not really comes into play in practicing that and being able to let go. Because when you understand that you can't change someone else. You can hold a higher vibration, but you can't change someone else if they don't buy into it, Mm -hmm. if they don't allow themselves to get raised. And then taking on that responsibility um, means that now you are dependent upon that person's reaction or response in order for you to feel okay. Mm -hmm. And then 
So the self-care comes in understanding that you need to fix your vibration and not even fix it, but get to a place where you understand what's yours and what's not so that you can help or you can help yourself. And if that person or situation does not respond to your assistance, your love, then you can choose a different way that will help you keep your vibration up and let and just let go of the responsibility. Right. Um, self-care, I, I, I forgot the person who, who said this quote, but it, I've kept it so much with me. It's, it's so important to me and something I have to remind myself of often. Self-care is putting your needs before somebody else's wants. Selfishness is putting um, somebody else's wants before your needs. Oh, oh wait, yeah. did I say that right? Um, I, <laughs> Selfishness is putting your wants before somebody else's needs. So if somebody's putting their desires um, and their wants before your needs, that's selfishness. Right. Exactly. And uh, that distinction is profound. And I think yes. it's interesting because... how how we can understand how this starts because like you say it starts with the fact that we're feeling it as though it is our own and even if even if you if if you're not an empath with that specific mechanism if you're a sensitive person who's caring you notice it and then it's hard to let it go because you're a caring person and so in a way you do make it your own I mean you you take charge of it and you 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 bring it into your space so getting down into that self-care um, is important. So I'd love to talk about, um, I think we have call, do we have calls, Jarvis? Okay. I'm just going to make a note because I want to talk about the, the spiritual function of, of what, how, how we do, um, heal or, or take care of ourselves, what that looks like. And then of course, we're going to, we're going to give you some practical tips too. We'll take a call and then we'll get back to, um, our chat. So by the way, before we do bring on the first caller, I just want to tell everyone who's listening, um, that whether you're listening live or if you're listening on some other archived outsor- outlet, that anything that comes through this show, you found us because you because spirit guided you here. So the messages that come through any of the advice or readings from the callers, that there's going to be a part in there for you. And I say that because sometimes when we're, we're listening and then we're like, oh my gosh, that's that that feels like it's for me, but that's for another caller. So it must not be, you know, I want you to know that that's actually how wise the universe is, universal energies that we work with because, um, they, they understand in all space and time, cause that doesn't actually, um, exist how to aggregate and help everyone who's involved, including Lauren and myself and Jarvis, by the way, who's producing. Hi Jarvis. <laughs> I, didn't see hi, Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say hi to Jarvis yet. So, um, and that goes to, if, um, we have callers that are on hold and you don't actually get through, please do listen because your attention is actually shaping the message and you're going to be addressed. Isn't that magical? <laughs> it is so magical. It's so true. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, let's take our first caller then. Hello, you're live on the air. Who's this? Hello, this is Jill. Hi, Jill. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> great. Good. Thanks. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Michigan. Nice to meet you. Okay, so um, I have Lauren on on the line with us as well. What's, what's going on? Hi, Lauren. <laughs> what's going on with you today, Jill? Oh, not um, I guess I was calling because I was seeing if I could get any guidance um, on my career path. I feel like I've come to kind of a crossroads and might want to go into a completely different career, but I do, don't really know what I want to do. I'm just kind of frustrated with where I'm at right now. Okay, great. Lauren, do you, are you picking, would you like to start? Sure. I'm actually feeling I want, I pulled out my Ascension, um, Ascended Masters cards and I want to pull Ooh. one for you. Oh, have fun. But I want you to know that I might wind up channeling because I feel it already. And that um, if you start, I might, you know, change the way that I speak a little bit so you, um, and start referring to we. That means uh, your guides okay. and angels have come in and wanted to give you some guidance. <laughs> So let's see. Awesome. Yeah, it's really beautiful. You have such a wonderful energy. Mm-hmm. I can feel it already. You have many things you want to do, awesome. don't you? I do. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like um, you have many things that you want to do and you're having trouble putting your energy into one or the other, wanting to know what is the right thing before you take steps. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, because, all right, you're like afraid, like, no, I need to know the outcome. Like, you're one of those, like, no, I don't want to waste my time. But I, then this other thing over here gets your interest. And then, <laughs> right. and like, well, wait a minute. I want to put that my energy to that. I have so many creative ideas. I don't know what to do. Do you do yoga at all? Um, a little bit. Not as I used to a lot. And I've kind of, like, gone away from that. Okay. Um, well, you got the yoga card. This is the other um, person's point of view card and the fertility card. So I feel like the yoga is really more about you meditating. So they're showing um, the picture on the card, I wish you could see, but um, it's about you meditating and getting quiet and relaxed so that you can see where your heart is leading you. Um, I feel you going like away from people. So I don't know if you're wanting to do some of your own, uh, something on your own and create your own business separate from what you're already doing, but you're afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. I feel like something is being burned. You got the fertility card. Whatever this is, start on it. I feel like um, it's, if it, does it have to do with health and wellness at all? Um, or some type of? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I'm leaning toward. Yeah. That, I'm seeing yes. I'm seeing yes, go large. But um, I don't know. I'm seeing you go towards a store. I don't know if you're going to be in a, like a storefront or teaching somewhere or doing something like that. But I see you like going off down the street for some reason. I don't know why um, there's, it, it's coming to okay. me this way. But you're like walking away away from something and getting to a new place. And it's like in a storefront, um, a small storefront or something like that. Um, see, person's point of view card means, oh, this looks like get feedback. Get feedback from where you wanna go. Do your a little bit of research first because as you start doing the research of what you want to accomplish and what you want to um, see mm -hmm. fruition, that energy is creating the buildup, is creating like, it's like this idea, you're getting, you're, <laughs> excuse the reference, but it feels like you're pregnant with this idea and this work. And that doing the research is kind of like taking care of it and growing this idea into what it's going to be birds. And it's going to be bigger than you even think um, okay. it is because you're like, oh, I don't know if it'll be that popular. How much money can I make off of it? Am I really going to do this? But yes, just give it time because it'll be slow at first. Um, get opinions mm -hmm. get feedback from other people that have done this before or are doing it and you'll be directed in the right way you'll meet with somebody actually that's gonna just volunteer to help you more than you even thought that oh. you know they should it'll be like oh my god wow this person's gonna align with you and really mm -hmm. help you um get an important piece of this puzzle down for you and then later on in the year you'll you'll see exactly where this is going because at first it's going to seem i don't know should i go this route should i go that route the route will become clear mm -hmm. how it's going to manifest for you more down the road and people are going to begin to help you but if it has to do with you going out on your own and something with health and wellness then a big yes okay awesome does that sound good jill that sounds great. Thank you that so much. That makes Yeah, it does. No, it definitely does. And I definitely needed to hear that. So I really appreciate it. And uh, just a little tip. I, I wrote down um, a way to decide between all of the different creative ideas that you have is just to take a breath, maybe get, mm -hmm. you know, after some meditation and just ask yourself which one is the most exciting and just go forward with that at that time or whatever aspect of the one that you choose, whatever is most exciting, because that excitement is actually what it feels like when we have resonance with our higher self and our higher self's guidance. So that will just and that'll help you. And you can just realize then you're not abandoning any of those and all of those ideas. Ideas are non-physical. So it's not like it's something you're going to lose. Ideas always exist. They're an energy and energy has to play out. So it's not like, well, if I don't water this plant, this physical plant, it will die. The physical plant is physical. We're talking about something that's non-physical. So the ideas are gold that your soul has already and always. So just to be able yeah, to focus. I'm hearing, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sweetheart. Like, that's good. Go, go for the one that's less practical because oh. you feel like there's some more practical okay. ideas and the one that's like, oh, a little out there. I don't know. Do the one. Um, I'm feeling a big yes from your guidance team to 
go for the one that seems like it's more exciting but less um, guaranteed. But when you do this, okay. you will discover your true creative talent, your two, your your connection to people is very, very strong. You have such a happy vibe about you mm. that whatever you plan on doing will create the higher self comes through to connect with the people, resources, and situations for you to connect with. Your ability to connect with people is very strong. This will be how you connect with your ideas. In love, in life, and in happiness, you have all that you need. Connect with joy and live from that experience. You are connected to your guides. Thank you and good day. Did you question whether or not you are connected to your guides? A little bit, yes. Okay, no, you are. <laughs> Perfect. You okay. are, and they are with you, encouraging you. They are, they're like a huge, I see them behind you, like with cheer, with cheerleading you on and everything. So they're just going, go, go okay. for it, go for it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, That's thank- so awesome here. This is awesome. Thank you so yes. much for calling, Jill. Please, you know, check back another time and let us know how it's going. I really appreciate you calling in today. Oh, I appreciate it as well. Thank you so much. Great. Have a good day, sweetie. Well, before we take another call, I think we had a good segue into the what I wanted to m- talk about, the, the pro- not, the, not the practical, actually, the spiritual um, function of how we do self-care and self-healing. You mentioned it about, about the higher self and how, how, what does that look like? Like, what is, what is the spiritual functioning of being able to care for ourselves and be able to heal ourselves? Okay. I feel like I want to channel this answer. Go for it. If that's okay. Yeah. With you. Yes. Sure. Then, see, there are many connections to people and their healing. There are many people that want to feel good. The feeling good is the connection. The feeling good mm. is the higher form connecting with what is connected to you in love. So as you sit and vibrate with joy, there mm. comes a time when there is something negative that communicates through you. I mean, there may be some fear, there may be some anxiousness, there may be some compassionate frequencies, empathic, energetic frequencies. And so you say to yourself, well, I feel low. I feel negative. I feel suffering. These are the higher frequencies of compassion. So when you feel these energies, they are letting you know how to communicate with your frequency. They are asking you, look, here is something painful. Here is something negating me. Here is something that is suffering from my position of where I am sitting. So I can choose how to reveal myself in a higher energy. I can change my thoughts about the energetic frequency that I'm in. I can align with a frequency of joy for someone else. I can connect with someone who is in a higher frequency and I can align with them and raise my own vibration. I can communicate with friends, happy times, loving energies. I can also remind myself that I am allowing time for me to communicate these feelings. Mm. I am allowing the vibration of love to communicate with me and to let me know what is really happening. What is connecting to me that is not of a higher frequency? What is connecting to me that is not of love for me? Then decide how you would like to connect with feeling better. But so many of the human energies feel negated by feeling good. Mm. They feel like suffering is how they learn or frustration is how they connect with solution. This is a negative energy. So connecting with it would become something of an issue of understanding how to feel better. Because as soon as you decide that suffering is a way to learn, you have decided that suffering is a higher energy. Mm. And that is how high you will go, is, is awakened only in the suffering. But if you decide that the higher form of who you are gives you clues, compassion, light, communication in the way feels good. You understand what is happening. You understand how to connect with your body, with your aligning energies. We say live from the higher form of who you are, meaning disconnect from feeling as if you must suffer in order to be a higher energy. 
in order to be a happy person, you must suffer first. This is not how God intends you to live, but with love and light and to communicate that something negative in your frequency is an awareness of what is not connecting to you in love, not a frequency of a personal negation of who you are, but one of loving energy connects to your feelings and says, this is happy, this is sad, this is painful, this is negative, this is joyful, this is hard, this is painful. These are feelings of which you decide how to communicate through the frequency of your light on earth. Thank you. Your question has experiences all over the world, meaning everyone asks, how do I heal self? And we say heal with the healedness of who you are and trust that who you are is a gift of love on light on earth. Thank you. That was so amazing. There was so much in that. Oh, my gosh. It's like if someone transcribed that, <laughs> you know, it was so rich. What I loved, this is so helpful. What I picked up that I think is the precipice of being able to switch your feelings about self-care versus selfishness. Oh, I said it right. Um, yes. <laughs> I think you healed me. Um, is that is that. The, the, the pivotal point is to decide that you can work from your higher form, to decide that suffering isn't how you learn and that frustration doesn't create collu uh, solution. And it's very normal that th you have those beliefs because that's the social conditioning, that's the journey, that's the forgetting, the duality of this experience. So first you just decide. That's how we know. Yes. That's how we know. We say, yes. this, this is, no matter what I'm doing, I'm changing. So let me move into something that feels good. Oh, wow, this feels great. You know, so the suffering the pain is not really deserving. Like so often, we, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Not at all. I didn't realize. No, that. Honey, <laughs> it's perfect. I, when you sometimes feel like I deserve this, I must have done something to deserve mm. this pain. I must have something negative in me that deserves this pain or you know, this suffering. But it's just a signal. It's yes. just an awareness. It's just an experience that says, well, this doesn't work out the way I planned it. So let's try something different. And that's the joy of living. That's the joy of creation. That's the higher form creating lightness on earth, knowing what is happy, what is not. And experiencing both sides is only, in a, is only a creation of your own form, meaning mm. you decide what feels good. You decide what is not for you. This is all in light, all in love. And when you decide that love is how you choose to live, then you can choose the things that are loving. And that is how it's done. And the more that, and when you make that decision and you make that choice about the things that, about, about kind of like that core decision of, um, I, I can work from my higher form and, and that I can, oh, there's a fly in here. Hello. I love you. <laughs> um, that, that, that decision and that, that beginning to work more and more from love and from your, your higher form, that vibration, that frequency will, will start to expose those other hidden beliefs that are, that are still in that suffering is how you learn, you know, and those small ones. And then you could just see those, like you say, as experiences, we could just say, oh, hello, hello, belief that I want to release. Thank you for your lesson. <laughs> and so yeah. I think that for me, that's th that feels very practical. And of course, s some of the self-care that we want to do is meditation and devotion and being able to feed ourselves spiritually. Do you agree? Yes, Jars I do. Do we so have another caller? Is... No, not right now. Okay, good. I'm, I'm not good. Please do <laughs> call in. 323-524-2599. Um, self-care, please go on, Lauren. Sure. Self-care is aligning with those things that put you in a vibration of, of love and, and happiness and joy and peace. So self-care is, can be different for each being. So that's why when we, when we decide what's best for others, it can become very frustrating, not only to the person, but to the self, mm. because you feel like you understand what's best for that person. And when you try to fix them, they can become very negated mm. just because you are asking them to fix something that they haven't seen is a problem. They will come to that energy on their own. 
But for you, as the human connecting to that experience, you must decide for yourself what is the higher form. Is it trying to fix someone that is not asking for your fixing? Or is it trying to align with the happiness of your vibration and then connecting to those that match that energy? So self-care can become a variety of things, connecting to the body, connecting to food, connecting to laughter, connecting to happiness. Spiritually speaking, all of you are spiritual beings. Mm. Connecting to meditation is how you connect to that spiritual side. This is an act of love. This is an act of light. This is an act of connection to the higher form. Meditation is how you do this. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's important to make contact. You make contact with your inner being, which is the same as making contact with God or the universe because the inner being is your God essence. Yes. And so it's very important in order to be able to have that clarity, in order to be able to have the clean, clean workspace and, of course, to bring in inspiration and peace and joy. Uh, peace and joy. You, uh, you mentioned peace and joy when you were channeling for Jill. Peace and joy is something that my guide, you, know, you were definitely, my, <laughs> I heard my master guide whispering in there. And it's like, Ooh, yeah, give her this, give her this, because that was for uh-huh. me as well. Um, I recently, actually, in another guide, um, m- my master guide has been working with me on peace and joy. And um, when I get, like Jill, our caller, has all of these creative ideas and doesn't know where to start. And so when I, w- I was having that one morning, that kind of, overwhelm good kind of overwhelm my guess because it's it's all good stuff but it can be so overwhelming that you don't know where to start and so I was like asking for help with that and my guides told me he told me seek first peace and all of these things will be added unto you as well which is um, a, a paraphrase of a bible for seek for seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you as well it was so amazing and then the next week so- isn't that beautiful yeah uh, well because I feel his energy is like, you know, as you said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, he is here. Yeah. And I feel that. And there's such a love and, and support for you in that. It's very beautiful. And you're very connected. I feel because like my empathic feelings is it's so beautiful, Trish. It's amazing. I'm starting to cry <laughs> a little bit because he is so sweet. I was in Boston. um <clears throat> I was in Boston a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't really matter where I was. I was calling an Uber. And as I called an Uber, um, I had some thoughts of like, I don't know, it was, I, I was feeling overwhelmed or something. I was having some kind of negative little swing, like uh, some kind of self-doubt maybe it was. And then, boop, you know, my, my uh, driver, I got the notification about my Uber arriving. And it said, <laughs> okay, my master guide's name is Anson, A-N-S-O-N, which is not that common a name. Badoop, Uber shows up. Anson is here. It's <laughs> that was the name of my Oh Uber. wow. It's wild. It's so wild. I've never met a person named Anson before. Right? And Jarvis is shaking his head. Yeah. Nuts. And I, I had to my um my intuitive coach, I had to send it to her because Anson does. He's very chatty when he wants yeah. to work <laughs> when I'm yeah, working with I someone. I can feel him now. Like I almost want to interrupt you again because <laughs> he was like wants to tell you stuff. I'm Go like, for well, it. She's for a reading, so <laughs> Go for it. If you want to well, let Anson fly, he, let him. <laughs> he is saying that you have everything you need. So often he sees you and he says, what is she doing? Why is she doubting? She has everything. And she knows this. Why does she feel this way? I love her. Oh. And he will see you and he will say to you, I love you. Yeah. Don't worry. And sometimes... He just lets you be because he understands how sensitive you are. And he understands this as being very connected to your animals and your guides. And he understands you need this time with them and with your animals who love you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And he says, live in that energy for yourself and trust it is who you are that we have come with you. It is who you are that says, bring me joy. I am the higher frequency of who you are. I am your light. Connect with who you are and all is done. Thank you. You are a passionate, loving human being and trust all is well. You have everything you desire and want in the world is very connected to you. Trust that it is aligned and it is communicating with you every day. Thank you and good day. 
That was amazing. Lauren, I have to tell you. So if, if you, if someone is listening, someone is listens frequently, you, and you listen to last week's show, I gave an affirmation to one of my callers, which is an affirmation that that Anson gave me um, several weeks ago now, and I've been using it every single morning in my af- in my meditation. I am that I am, and you said I am several times instead of you are. He was saying that, and you, if you guys yeah. listen back to this, Lauren, you said I am, and you're like you were quote, quoting me saying what I am. Amazing. The I am that I am, of course, is the name of God in the Old Testament, but. Um, it's also what I am that I am means for me as an affirmation is accepting myself and the creation that I am in this moment. But it's also being extremely present because there is no time. So my everything, it's basically what Anson was saying. I have everything. I am that I am. And I'm here completely present with this. And that's what that means oh. to me. So thank you so much for that. You're so welcome. Oh, that amazing. was beautiful. And it's so funny because when I channel and they come through, Sometimes, you know, my ego mind, like I, my consciousness kind of comes back, but I'm still observing and hearing and listening. Um, and that's, it's funny because I'm having my own thoughts about it. And I'm mm. like, am I saying this right? I am. Is that, is that what he means? <laughs> right. And so obviously, you know, and, and it's so funny. I should have learned to trust that they know what they're talking about by now. Right. But I still come through it. Like, you know, my, I'm going, oh, I hope that makes sense to her. Right. <laughs> and obviously it did. Oh, it made so much sense. And the, the trust in it, because something that's something I've been working on, too. Thank you for mentioning that when I give a reading. And it's OK if someone doesn't understand it the instant that you're done, because let's face it, it's kind of there's a lot going on. There's a lot of feels. And so, you know, you put it in your pocket, the person who's sitting, the person who's receiving the reading and they they, they may get the they may resonate with it later. And they're just dealing with what they need. It's kind of like what you said about who comes forward. It's like you got a lot. Here's a whole package of stuff. Unpack it <laughs> later. And, you know, we just have to trust and give it. I actually was just listening to the this podcast and these mediums um, talking about their work. And they said that because they've been working for decades and that they've gotten calls 10 years later. And someone's like, oh, my gosh, I know who you were talking about. Wow. <laughs> I know who you brought wow. through that day 10 years ago. And I didn't know because this, in particular, this couple, um, the wife actually sketches her mediumistic v- visions. And so she sketches. Oh, I love it different ways brilliant right out to like express our, these intuitive abilities it's amazing it is so amazing wow we covered so much today um we don't we don't have another caller right because i think we'll go over if we if we try to get to one we do have a caller do you, we have to get going though yeah okay so we just have a couple of minutes callers thank you so much for calling in callers um please do call back next week and please do listen to the whole show because oh my goodness we packed so much into this I promise there is uh, that you're you are addressed as well. We have like two minutes, Jarvis. Okay, great. Well, any um, uh, please, Lauren, first before you we give last thoughts. Um, tell everyone how they can find you and work with you. Oh, awesome. Okay, so you can go to my website. It's called Soulful Transformations um, dot com, and you can also. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash soulful transformations. And it has a YouTube channel as well. Um, it's called Lauren Antifermo, <laughs> my full name. So it's a big, long Italian last name. Hopefully, <laughs> It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you can connect with me there and see more of my channelings, um, see my postings. And if you want to work with me, my website is the place to get a hold of me. And yeah, thank you so much, Trish. I feel like we could talk forever. I know, right? I, I'm at some point. I'm going to extend this show another half an hour. <laughs> we'll be able to do a lot of readings and a lot of talking, a lot of teaching. But you're yes. such, you're so wise, and you bring forth so much information and so much help for um, for all of us, and obviously for um, for yourself as well, right? <laughs> That's yes. what's so beautiful about doing this work is that we receive the healing as we're doing it. We receive the very lessons. It's so beautiful. Um, well, I, any last words on our topic about selfishness versus self-love? I did it again. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to encourage everyone to really understand that your work, your love, your light could only be expressed when you are feeling that. Mm. And in order to feel that and to do that, you have to be able to give time and love to the self that the most important source of love is from yourself. And so when you do that, 
you can express all the love you have outward to others. And that is how light is spread in the universe. Love of the self expresses in love for the all. Yes. Thank you. Yes, the golden rule, uh, the foundational component of the golden rule, love your neighbor as yourself, which is not only in the Bible, it's in every single major religion. Um, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, the, the, found, the foundation of that is self-love. And we are actually out of time. So I want to thank, thank my guest again, Lauren Antuframo, for being here today. And I want to thank you all for being here. I want to encourage you to stay sensitive. Thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Mm-hmm.